If you build it, they will come. Who? Who will come? The subscribers. Okay then, let's do this. Hello guys and welcome. Some of you may remember my 12V mini UPS. I built it a few months ago. Well, I received a ton of comments to build a better one with two outputs. So, here it is. And now I will show you how I built it with so many details that will damage your brain. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, which is a professional printed circuit board manufacturer with over 14 years of experience in making high quality PCBs at affordable prices. Please visit their website at jlcpcb.com to check what products and services they offer. You just need to upload the Gerber file and order high quality PCBs for your project starting at $2. This is the UPS I built, it looks nice, right? But there is a lot of work invested in it. I actually built it for a friend who has an optical network terminal and an ASUS router, so it needs two outputs. But most importantly it uses only the two chargers, it doesn't need a separate charger. These are the components I need, I also added some more components while building it. I insist to get some curved tweezers, they are very useful for projects like this one. We also need a lot of wires, I will get them from an old and broken PC power supply. There are plenty of colors to choose from. And for the battery indicator, LEDs and other low power components I will use breadboard wires, they are thin and flexible. But most importantly we need a good constant voltage constant current power supply. The one I built isn't good enough. Yet, my variable power supply video received a lot of comments that I should install multi-turn potentiometers for a better precision. So before starting the UPS build I will upgrade the power supply. Here you can see some good multi-turn potentiometers already installed. And I also replaced the voltmeter and ammeter display. This one has 4 digits so the power supply is more precise now. Let's begin with a difficult question. How can I fit all these components plus some more inside the box? I just need to take it step by step. The lithium ion cells are the biggest components of this project. I will use these high drain 18650 cells because they can handle any current inside the UPS without getting hot. Of course I need to test them first with my Opus charger. The initial voltage for transport and storage should be 38 volts. But I bought these cells almost a year ago, so they got to 3.70 something volts, which is still ok. I will give these cells a few cycles of charging and discharging with 700 mA. And finally the capacity is 1.6 amp hours. This is not what I expected, I mean it's not bad, but I was hoping for a bigger capacity. I will still use them, because these are new cells and should have a very low self discharge rate, which is very important for projects like this. They will be connected in a 4S2P configuration, so we need a good 4S BMS board. This one should be good enough. My friend wants to easily replace the lithium cells if needed, so I will use these battery holders. I like them because they have some plastic clamps which hold the lithium cells pretty good. I will use my old and trusty soldering gun for most soldering joints. Let's prepare the battery pack and BMS board for testing. Be careful with the polarity, you can easily short some cells. This battery pack is almost fully charged, as you can see. So if I set the charging voltage to 16.9 volts, the BMS is using only 660 mA to charge the cells. After a few minutes the charging current decreased to around 100 mA and remained there. Now the BMS is balancing the cells. To finish the charging process it needs a higher voltage as I will explain later. But if I disconnect and reconnect the charger it doesn't draw any more current, not even 100 mA. You can even see a difference between the charger voltage and the battery voltage. This is because the BMS board has an overcharge release voltage feature, which doesn't allow the charging until the battery is discharged to a certain level. 
This is good because lithium cells don't like to be continuously charged, unlike lead acid batteries. But they do have a slow self discharge rate. If I simulate that with a dummy load resistor and decrease the battery voltage a bit, you can see that the charging process is resumed. But the charging current drops fast because the battery pack is already charged. What other components do we need for this UPS? First we need to test the power consumption of those devices. This is the optical network terminal which is using only 220 milliamps at 12.1 volts. And now the Asus router. At startup it's using very little power, but after it's connected to the internet and we are making some traffic, the current consumption goes to maximum 550 milliamps at 19.3 volts. What about the chargers? This is important because the UPS will use the same chargers. The ONT charger can deliver maximum 1 amp and the ASUS charger 1.75 amps. So we have plenty of spare power to work with. I want to use a relay which will be powered by the 12 volts charger. It will be connected like this. When it receives power from the charger it will disconnect the load from the battery pack. And by load I mean two DC converters, a fan and a LED. The relay is using 30 milliamps, and over time the coil inside will heat up. But if I decrease the voltage I can get it down to 20 milliamps, so less heat. How low can I set the voltage so that it still works properly? Let's start with a low voltage, increase it slowly and see when the relay clicks. At 7 volts the relay is activated, but the click sound was very weak, so it will not work correctly. But at 10 volts the relay works fine and it's using only 23 milliamps. The heat is also important because it will always be powered inside the plastic box, so let's see how hot this relay gets while being powered with 12 volts. Remember the relay is always activated inside the UPS unless there is a power outage. After half an hour it got to 34 degrees Celsius. I will decrease the voltage now to 10 volts for another 20 minutes. And the temperature dropped to 32 degrees, so 10 volts is the winner. Diodes have a small forward voltage drop, so I will use 3 diodes in series with the relay to decrease the voltage to around 10 volts. You can see the current draw decreasing from 30 milliamps to 24 milliamps. Now I need to make a circuit to power the relay. I will use a piece of stripboard and it will also include the fuse holders. I like this type of fuse holders, they are small and easy to work with, but I need to enlarge the stripboard holes with a 1.5mm drill bit. I will use 3 fuses because the UPS has 3 power sources, 2 chargers and the battery pack. But with this type of stripboard you have to cut the copper traces where needed, carefully. Otherwise you'll just create a beautiful short circuit. And after just 4 hours of work I finished this piece of the puzzle. It took this long because I added some M3 standoffs and I also had to test the copper traces for any hidden shorts. Here is the schematic for this circuit board. I will use red wires for the 12 volts rail, blue for 19 volts and yellow for the battery pack. This is a simple 12 volts fan rated at 100 milliamps. It will be activated by the relay when the UPS works on battery power. The connector and yellow wires are not needed. Let's test it. This 100 milliamps fan it's using 150 milliamps. You little liars. I want to power it with a lower voltage for two reasons. One for a lower current consumption and second to prolong its lifespan. With 6 volts it's using only 71 milliamps. I will use this tiny step down converter to decrease the variable battery voltage to a stable 6 volts for the fan. The power supply represents the battery pack and the voltmeter will measure the output of the converter. The fan is connected to the output of my volt slash ammeter. I just need to turn the potentiometer to set the fan voltage. You can see that for a 71 milliamps output, the converter is using only 45 milliamps from the battery pack, which has a nominal voltage of 14.4 volts. Okay, I've postponed it long enough. It's time to get messy. 
This is the electrical junction box I want to use, but it needs to be modified first. This is a job for my rubbish unpowered 6 watts rotary tool. And of course I need protective goggles because I love my eyes. I'll start by removing the standoffs from the backside. This milling drill bit will finish the job. The remaining surface is very smooth now. Let's move to the front side. I need three cutouts for the battery indicator and switches. I used the cutter to smooth out the edges and I made two holes for the 5mm LEDs. And this is the result of some very patient manual labor. The battery holders will be mounted in the back of the switches. I just need to mark their position and make some holes for the 3mm screws. This chamfering bit is used to smooth out the edges of the holes, but if you don't have one just use a bigger drill bit. In the back side I also made some holes for the circuit boards. And now some more holes for ventilation, because the air needs to enter the UPS through the bottom panel. You can see that most of the ventilation holes are made around the battery pack. And the view from under the box. I think these holes are enough to cool down some components that actually should not get hot. In the back panel I will make a big round hole for the fan. But first I will cover the panel with some paper tape, because I don't want to scratch it when cutting the hole. I will use my electric jigsaw now. I want to thank all my patrons for their support. If you want to see more DIY videos and updates about my future projects, you can check out my Patreon page. The fan hole is almost finished, I just need to use the sandpaper a bit. I would say it turned out pretty well, the protective fan grill will mask any imperfections. It's time to mount the components inside the box. I'll start with the battery holders and the BMS board. The series connections are already made. I just need some 3mm screws, but they must not touch the lithium cells, so they need to be short. I have a lot of these screws from repairing old computers. This is the battery switch, later I will replace the brown wire with a yellow one. It will be connected like this. I will use this 4S battery level indicator to indicate the level of the battery. Now that's some useful information right there. The battery switch will turn it on. I will fix it in position with super glue gel. And now the main input switch. It will connect the 12 volts and 19 volts inputs and power the green LED when it's turned on. I'll hide the wires as much as I can. In the front side of the UPS I'll place them behind the battery holders. The BMS board will be fixed on the side panel with strong double-sided foam tape. To charge the lithium cells I want to use this step-down converter with constant current feature. You can adjust the maximum current and voltage with the two potentiometers. It will draw some power from the 19 volts adapter, but it's important to limit the current, otherwise it may draw too much and overload the charger. The router may not work correctly and it can also damage the charger, which is pretty expensive. When I connect this dummy load resistor, you can see that the converter is entering constant current mode. I set it to 900 milliamps, but I had some problems with this converter as I will explain in the next episode. Without knowing what follows, I placed the converter in position with sticky foam tape. There is still a lot of work ahead and this video is already getting too long. In the next episode I will explain how the BMS works, I will finish the UPS and I will test it. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the like and share buttons and I will see you soon. Bye!